Greetings, everybody. It's Friday the 22nd of January, day 70. And my hero, Henry Shackleton, stood 97 miles from the South Pole on the morning of January the 9th, 1909. He said he'd shot his bolt. Well, today, I have to inform you in some sadness that I, too, have shot my bolt. The audio clip you just heard was the final transmission of Henry Worsley before he was evacuated 30 miles short, becoming the first ever person to cross the Antarctic solo. Henry aimed to complete the 1100 mile trek in 75 days to mark the century of Shackleton's expedition and to raise funds for the Endeavour Fund, a charity that helps ex-service men and women. After two days in his tent and with no strength to move, Henry made the call to be airlifted to safety. He was flown to a hospital in Chile, where he subsequently died of bacterial peritonitis. Henry's wife Joanna described him as a man of enormous mental strength, who felt a huge responsibility towards the Endeavour Fund. It was this mentality of giving back to those less fortunate than Henry that the public really connected to on a personal level. Henry's fundraising page crashed due to the volume of people donating and many industry-leading individuals paid their respect to Henry. However, there was one interview that really stuck out to me. Tom Tugendhat, a friend of Henry's in the army, spoke about how Henry would be missed by all. Genuinely, he is one of the most impressive people I've ever met, and, and uh, he's an extraordinary loss, uh, not just to the army from whom he retired not that long ago, uh, but to our country. I mean, he really has demonstrated that you know, the days of adventure and heroism are are not dead, and our fellow citizens are really doing the most extraordinary things still. Moved and inspired by the words Tom used to describe Henry, I went along to meet him and find out more about what drove Henry. Uh, Henry, is, Henry is absolutely full of life, full of energy, uh, and huge fun. Uh, we met in 2006 in Helmand, which as you can imagine was not uh, always a barrel of laughs, but somehow, uh, somehow it, it, it was. Um, Everything from sort of organising sports for local kids, or uh, or, or going on a, a patrol around town, uh, was always uh, somehow ended up as, uh, as a lot more fun than it should have been. I think the most important thing Henry's left behind actually is uh, the spirit of adventure that he embodied and encapsulated so well. It's always it's always a question uh, that people ask: is why why does the spirit of adventure matter in today's age when you know you can look at everything from a satellite photo or from Google Maps or whatever. But it, it's not about where you go, it's about who you are. And the adventure that Henry encapsulated is exactly that same sense of adventure that you see in cutting edge science, in really good literature, in amazing film, in, in the effort to try and bring people together. That sense of adventure, that sense of pushing yourself further to do better, not only for yourself, but also for everyone around you, for in fact for your common humanity, I think it's, it's exactly what Henry encapsulated. Henry felt most at home in the Arctic, why is that? <laughs> I, I, I can think of a thousand reasons why that might have been so, possibly his sense of humour was most appreciated when there was nobody there, no that's unfair. But the, um, uh, Henry clearly had a strong association to uh, his family legacy, and, um, you know, he really, he was aware, I think, that there is nothing quite so testing as a cold desert. And in that, he showed very clearly that he was willing to always go that extra mile, you know, beyond the, beyond the mountain. And, uh, and I think just the Arctic really summed up, or rather the Antarctic really summed up that absolute struggle. Henry will go down in history as one of the greats of polar exploration. Not only will his legacy live on through his two children, but also through the thousands of next generation explorers and adventurers he's inspired.